all of you who are, oh, there we go, got it. Uh, it's wonderful that you, those of you are here, are here, and I hope more will join us. We have an, a really lovely event this evening to present with three wonderful artists. Um, I just want you to know that there are two of us. Valerie's going to be our, Valerie Miranda is executive director of the gallery at PVA, and she will be our host and technical support. <laughs> <laughs> and I will moderate. I'm Rosie Penhello. I will be moderating this evening. So um, we're going to have three different artists that will each have 20 minutes or so to present their work. And following each one, there'll be questions, a time for questions and comments. During the presentations, please turn off your mics so that they have, there's no ambient noise to interfere with their presentation. And then when they're finished, we can turn the mics back on so we can engage with them. Um, so the three artists tonight are featured in the current exhibit at PDA. It's in behind Valeria, you can see Alma Sagrada. That is the, the title of the exhibit. It's uh, Alma Sagrada. That title is Sacred Soul. It's a really many wonderful uh, artist film works that speak from other oh. hearts and souls. Rosie, I don't know if something's happening with your mic, but um, it sounds like something's rubbing against the microphone. Oh, it's my notes. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I don't know where that mic is. I'll have to, uh, I will put them down and not fiddle with them. Uh, so this exhibit is on display till uh, May 22nd and it, it really would be wonderful. Whoever has not seen it could go see it. It's very inspiring. And uh, three of the artists who are featured in that exhibit are presenting tonight. So we're honored to have them. Uh, we have Abi Mustafa, Jose Ortiz and Natalia Anciso. Um, and we are very happy to um, answer any questions at the end. And I think we'll just go ahead and go get, get started here. Our first artist is, if I could find her notes, oh, here we are, is Abby Mustafa Abby. She's a Sierra Leonean American artist born in Indiana, where she received a BA in political science with an emphasis on sustainability. Her vibrantly toned, detailed paintings are primarily focused on large scale portraiture that examines the complexity of expression and shows the common depths of our humanness in the beauty of cross-cultural diversity. She's exhibited widely in the Bay Area and the Midwest. And she was the 2020 Santa Cruz Museum of Art and History Artist in Residency, Artist in Residence. So please welcome Abby and we'll turn all our mics off. Hi, can you hear me? We can hear you, and I'm gonna. Okay. Um, is, are you ready for me to share my content? Yes. Okay. Uh, it says that the host needs to let me. Okay. Here she goes. Are you waiting for the hosts? Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Valeria? Good to share, turn the share screen on. Are you there, Val? Yes, I just made her a co-host. She should be able to, uh, to do it now. Thank you. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so um, what I was starting with was, uh, it was gonna be kind of an art journey through um, the art that I've made in the past several years and what got me to doing large scale art and murals as well. So a lot of the art that it begins with is not the art that's in the show. It kind of ends with that. So. Abby, what um, we see are, is a thumbprint. 
Hmm. Of just the art? Yeah, thumbprint of the art. That's what we see. Yeah. I don't, this is the same way that I did it on practice. So I don't know exactly what to do. Um, is that? Oh, can you click on one of the images, Abby? There mm -hmm. you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, so this was, this is kind of the beginning of Art Journey. This was one of the first large scale pieces that I did of Bob Marley. And just started um, at home on the wall with a roll of paper and I was doing it from a grid style. And all of this just kind of goes through that. Some of these pictures of what I ended up like, I did a lot of collage in the beginning. I'm still, I'm like hoping to get back to that. This is a really large piece that I did that is actually back, I have it back now in my studio, my Gandhi piece. Mm -hmm. It's four feet by four feet. And it has just an immense amount of layers. And when I started drawing large scale, I was, I was just like taking my time because I had time. I had another job and didn't have to finish art the, <laughs> with this. I think you might be muted again, Abe. Are you there, Abby? Hmm. Abby was having a little trouble with her um, internet when we had a practice, so maybe that's what's going on. Let's give it a couple of more minutes. Abby, can you hear me? Oh, technology. Valerie, Valeria, are you there? Give me a second. I'm talking to you. Uh, I'm checking in with Abby, okay? Thank you so much. Okay. Zoom mm -mm, no. Rosie, I suggest we move on to the next uh, to the next artist while I'm having Abby in the background to figure it out. Okay, and uh, so the next artist will be Jose. 
Is that going to work for you, Valeria? Yeah, totally fine. Go for it. Wonderful. So can he be a, a host to present his, his uh, share screen? Oh, I'm not on. I'm going to introduce you. So the, this is Jose Ortiz. He's an illustrator, painter, sculptor, fabricator, and muralist, and is the founder and director of Ijos del Sol, a nonprofit program in Salinas where experimental studio space is provided for young visual artists. He has been the recipient of several honors, including being named champion of the arts by the Mexican, Mexican consulate in San Jose and the CSUMB Distinguished Fellow in 2020. The hardships of his early childhood being very young and displaced for many years from his natural family is what Jose states is the thread that binds his work. There is a loving softness in his tenderly executed large scale paintings currently displayed in the Alma Sagrada exhibit at PVA. And I'm looking forward to hearing all about what he has to say and show us. So please welcome Jose. Well, thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you for the nice introduction. Absolutely. Very well spoken. I don't have that fancy words, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I don't yes. have fancy words. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, well, I uh, growing up in a with a family that was moving from nothing to something, you know, to, it was it was a little difficult as a child, but I was still uh, happy. Uh, I don't see myself any different. However, yeah, most of my work that I do, it's got to do with my thoughts and it's got to do with how I feel about what I see and what I believe to be true, right? That's, I think we all have that. Yeah, so, um, uh, Valerie, do you want do you want to share, just share anything that's on that folder, and I'll speak about it. And so and, you would like me to share it? Yeah, would you okay. please? Yeah, I, I will do that. To to do anything with my Zoom, I think I got to go to Apple and buy stuff, and I haven't done it. I just lost. Uh, well, not lost. I didn't lose anything. Uh, just my uh, my graphic designer who was handling most of my digital work and uh, he's not longer with us right now he's taking a break so i'm kind of lost when it comes to technology <laughs> all right do you want to share anything that's on that folder yes I'm, and, I'm, yeah. I'm 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 starting to share it now yeah anything will do can everybody see it yeah yes all right uh, jose just tell me next slide when you're ready okay Yes, uh, this is just a, a photograph of one of the uh, paintings that we did for, uh, it was a place actually. Um, but this is kind of like a study. And it is the, uh, the beginning of what I, the painting that is hanging right now at the at, uh, Alma Sagrada, Pajaro Valle Arts Gallery. And this is called Despojo, which is, us being ripped out of our home and place and and how we stuck together, how my mother, who was a single mother, but she always said, don't ever say you don't have a mother, a father, because you, I am your mother and your father. But this painting was born out of that sentiment or that, or that uh, my mother's words. I was about four years old when this Mary and Mary came to me. So as the years passed, I, uh, I, I, I guess I beckon those memories, you know, I bring them back and then this is what it interprets visually. Yeah, next. Okay, so this is another, this is sculpture actually. This is all made out of paper. 
And this, we use these, uh, I use these, well, we I like to say we, not I, so uh, if you have any questions about that, I can answer. So we use this as a, as a, as a symbol of Mother Earth and for the Dias de los Muertos. And it's a sculpture that was born out of just the thought of a woman being everything, the earth, the sky, everything, the wind, the water, and it's all made out of paper and it's, it's perishable. And, and it was a task just to come up with it. And uh, it measures about seven feet high and it's on a pedestal. And you probably get to see it soon because we are gonna try to bring it to Pajaro Valle Arts Gallery for this year's uh, um, Dias de los Muertos. I, we call it Dias where we come from. And I know in the States and in some parts of Mexico, they call it Dia de los Muertos, but this is about many days. We start in June, already planting the seed of the Sem Sempasuchil and, and it's just a process. And we call it Dias a los Muertos is because it's, we dedicate part of our time to remember them, the people that have meant so much to us and, not, and now that they are gone. And, and this is just a symbol. Next, please. Yeah, this is, most of my work has been on walls. Walls seems to uh, attract me or bring me in. And this is in, I believe, it, this is in Seaside or, uh, what is it called? Um, it's in an elementary school. And this is about a, it was a three, six month work. And the size is monumental. It was 15 by about 90 feet. And when you stand on it, they, these people look really humongous. They are the dolphins. So I believe that we walk, we swim with the dolphins and you know, we try not to call it a mascota or what they call a pet. So I'm trying to bring in just the spirit of, of what it means, you know, so how people can relate to an ocean animal, mammal, who is also a person to us and how we can connect and how we should preserve and see them as equal animals to us in the Native American thought is they are our companions and our protectors at times. So this is part of that and we brought it to, uh, to Seaside. Next. Ah, it is, uh, this is the Lady of Assumption, our version of Assumption. We were, I was uh, asked to create a piece that will adorn the new, the new building, the remodeled building. They're, got, they're remodeling the uh, La Virgen de la Asunción, which is in Pajaro, which is a chapel that is there. And they asked me if I can do a painting that they can print on tile in front of the new building. And so this is by itself is eight by, it's nine by eight uh, feet of paint. And uh, they asked me if I can do these elements. And so I, I thought about the field workers in Pajaro and the, the strawberry pickers and how it can play a role in, in this fantastic, bigger than, larger than life, project and that's what I came up with. I, I don't usually use models per se. I don't, I don't do portraits. I do them sometimes. That was my beginnings. You know, I was doing a lot of portraits. I would draw what I saw, but at one point in my, in my journey, I, I thought about how can I just create a person that is everybody, that can represent everybody or 
or some, a lot others than just one person. So portraits usually are about one person and, and that's okay and that's fine. I, I do them sometimes. I have two of them hanging on, on Alma Sagrada, but on the murals, I, I, I like people to connect. Just see a person, you know, it's a round face, oval face, triangular face, it's, it's a color, it's, it's got eyes and nose and, and, and lips, but it's no one specifically, and it's just a figure, and it gives you the idea that it's, it, is, it is either a female, male, or just a person, whatever it is, and I don't know if I'm capturing that, but that's that's the feeling behind this painting. Uh, and then I usually join the cosmic uh, connection that we have to everything. You know, the planet is amazing. It's our, it's our mother ship. That's what my grandmother used to call it. We're traveling in space and in this fantastic, you know, nave espacial, which is like a, a spaceship. And I'm trying to gather those thoughts of my grandmother and put them in there. Next. Ah, they asked me to do something for Senor Cesar Chavez. I, I don't know him very well. I, I never met him very, I heard about him. My mother was, was not too fond of Mr. Cesar Chavez, but she thought that he did something good for the people. So I, my thought is that he was kind of like a protector as well. And that's why this came out. He was, I made this before his uh, first, uh, they made it, they wrote a play. I, I think it was his, um, his, uh, Nephew wrote a play, Let the Eagle Rise, something like this, uh, right. And I was asked to do uh, the first uh, uh, scenic design for this play, but I had painted this before that, that play and I put the eagle on top of him as a way to see how it was protected, you know, like the bald eagle or the golden eagle. And so the, the story says that uh, Mr. Cesar Chavez, when they found him, uh, when he passed away, he passed away in his bed and on top of his chest, he, he was looking at a book of eagles. So that was kind of interesting for me to know, I mean, to hear that. Anyways, this is just part of what I think is, is what he did. He tried to bring in a balance between uh, the workers. Ha. Huh. Okay, can we go to the next uh, gallery? Thank you, Valeria. Ah, this is Cole el Encargo yeah, in, the, in the hands in the, in the hands off, I think, El Encargo. When you, yeah, this is for the hospital, Natividad Medical Center. It measures nine feet high and, it, and it's uh, the longitude, the length is, um, I believe 56, something like that, feet. And it's all painted on a, a canvas that was, had to be um, fire retardant and with oil paints, so they could be placed on the uh, on the on the halls of the uh, um, Natividad Medical Center. It's an amazing piece, but it's painted with oils, so it took us a while. It's a three-year production. But when they asked me if I could assist with this, uh, the image appeared within a week, probably less. You know. They gave us a tour of the whole hospital and they, they, they pointed out the MRI as, a, as the main kind of more sophisticated machine that they had there. And they were proud, you know, the doctors, nurses, the workers, the staff. 
and it was incredible to meet all these people, how they care about their building, how proud they were and, and uh, this machine. And Salinas population in the east side, uh, Natividad Medical Center is on the east side and it serves 68% of the people that live in Salinas, but they all, most of them reside in Salinas. And, um, and it's amazing because they're doing a great job on in bringing in interpreters from the Oaxacan people, the uh, other Native American in Mexico languages and other languages, Filipino, they're doing also uh, Chinese. And it just, I, all the, I don't know if you see the figures here well, but they're spermatozoids. I know they think they, they were thinking they were angels, but I think they are. You know, whatever you want to call them. I just believe that our focus is in a living cell, right? The uh, the child, the womb. That's what it's about. Is when life starts and and what it ends, and how that process um, is very important for every human or every earthling on Earth and how to bring it together. However, they wanted me to change the part where the child and the MRI and the family are and the doctors. And I did, but you have to go to the Natividad Medical Center to check it out. <laughs> it, it's, it's still uh, an amazing piece. Uh, can we see the next one, Valerie? Jose? Yes. It looks like you have a lot of very wonderful things to show us and um, probably you're about halfway through your time. Okay. So, I love the stories. I'm sure we all love the stories, but we might have to shorten it just a little bit, the stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, this is for this painting. Oh, well, Rosemary. Um, this is for endangered uh, animals. Um, we're working with children, incarcerated, incarcerated youth, and their task was to paint animals and not know humans. And so, the idea was families, we put the, the, the families together, you know, the, the mother and the child of the animal, because that's what's getting extinct. It's a family. Okay, the next. This is a sketch. Uh, it didn't proceed to be in the Natividad. I mean, it was in the Bank of America. It was supposed to be a mural of how, you know, monetary or uh, financial security to secure the family, but it didn't proceed. I just thought I'd show you sketches, rough sketches. Next. Uh, this is part of the uh, beginning of the mural of El Encargo in the hands of. All right, next. Ah, incarcerated youth appear again. And, and this was for the juvenile hall system of incarcerated youth. And this is where the zero tolerance loss. And this is just the beginning of the sketch. I, I, I thought I'd maybe share it with you because I what motivates me a lot sometimes is just the beginning when something is born. And, and that's what I thought maybe I could share with you. Next. Ah, this is a this is the whole production of the uh, uh, in ah forget the name of the word but this is for um, salud para la gente and they've asked me to paint one of my memories this is one of my memories a memoir for they really loved it they love the concept this is the beginning of some family in in the fields or in whatever kind of, I don't know if you see the mop, the, the broom, the, the hammer, the pail is because it's just the beginning. It's how we start in a new land and a new, uh, in a new place. And the people behind them is their ancestors. Is there, is, is there abuelos, abuelas? It's, it's, it's your, grandfathers, your, your grandmothers, your great grandmothers, and they don't leave you. They always walk with you. But this is just a new birth, a new beginning. 
el despojo. It's, uh, it's in salud para la gente and it's printed on tile in the front of the building. Next. This is for a book called La Perla or The Pearl by John Steinbeck. They asked me if I can interpret the book in a mural and this is what came out after reading it. I had seen it before and I read it before, but I had to read, revisit the project, the, uh, the story so that this can come out. If you read the story, you, you, you'll understand this painting. It's an amazing book, by the way. Next. Well, part of what we do as, uh, as, as, as illustrators here in Salinas, if we bring Dia de los Muertos, and I, you can see the lady that was, that was at the beginning and she's filled with pure paper. And we do this every year here in Salinas. And this was at the Steinbach National Center in Salinas. It's just uh, an installation with a lot of uh, thought about Dia de los Muertos. Next. Uh, it's a sketch for, uh, that maybe you wanna see sketches before you see the paintings, but this is just a grandmother with her grandchildren. She's like a big tree. Uh, in where I come from, we call them uh, abuelos, the, the larger trees that are 100 years and over, their grandparent, grandparents, uh, trees. Next. Uh, this is just a self portrait. I have a mask. I think we all wear masks all the time. I think we, we have all these. We have all these, um, these ideas about how we paint ourselves, how we tell our stories. And this is my Nahual, which is an eagle and a jaguar. These are your spirit animals or your soul animals and they're your protectors. Next. This is the beginning of the, the birth of La Virgen or de, de la Asunción or the version of uh, Assumption. I don't even know if I'm saying that correct. And next. Ah, this is a new part to the El Encargo, which is in Natividad Medical Center. This is a new version instead of the MRI that was on the other side with the other family, a little too funerary. That's, uh, that was one of the comments. They wanted to have a little bit more life to the painting. And this is like the old medicine with the new medicine, the family with the family of doctors. Next. There's La Asunción de Nuevo. Next. <laughs> ah, this, is, this sketch is a memoir as well. This, uh, this is my, actually my mother and I'm, on, I'm that little kid with the sleeves up and by his, by his, uh, on his arms and longer hair covering one of my eyes because I have a blind eye. And that's my brothers and sister behind her. And this is how she would, we would greet her in the, uh, on the borderline of Mexicali, Baja California and Calexico when she was working in the fields and the tomatoes and the asparagus in Calexico. And she would bring bags and we will meet her at the, at the, uh, you know, the entrance of the uh, border, border gates and we would help her out. It's just a memoir. Next. This is a mural in um, Seaside um, Middle School in Fort Ord and I think it's seaside as well. Um, this is a 18 feet high mural and 120 feet long, but this is the centerpiece. Uh, they call themselves the, the Hawks, no, the Eagles. And somebody just told me that their theme, uh, Together We Rise, so this is what came out of that. 
uh, that um, sends let the eagle fly. If you want to see it, it's, it's an amazing painting. It's, it's, it's big. It's all done with brush and paint. Can you do next, Valerie? That's more like a part of the mural that I really enjoy this. There's a child running and the strength on that person is amazing. By the way, this all collaborated. There were about 150 kids collaborated on it. And then also some of my, my colleagues or apprentices, and we all did it together. Next, uh, do I have time to, uh, do you want me to stop and maybe ask if they have any comments? You know, well, why don't you go through, go through, do you have many more to go through? There's, it's just a wonderful presentation you're giving. And I think, oh. you know, it would be lovely if we could see your work and we, then we will stop and talk, ask if people have questions and comments. Yeah, this is, this is for the new remodeled um, pediatric center. Um, they thought they invited us to paint alebrijes for the pediatric center. And so this is what this is one of mine. I designed this with watercolors and we painted it on a construction mesh that was actually, we painted, it's like a mobile project. We painted it on our studio and then we moved it to the pediatric center at Nativa Elementary and we pasted them onto the wall and we painted around them like if they were painted on that wall. Um, but it was an amazing project about six different artists, uh, young artists uh, painted with me uh, this project and we did all the hallways. Uh, so it was pretty, pretty amazing project, bringing, bringing it to, you know, children that are visiting this, this pediatric center and their, and their families. It's magic. Um, El Alebrique means a protector of your, companion is your soulmate kind of thing and and they're not they're just magical creatures um, next it's ah uh, this is just one of my portraits this is, this is a portrait mm -hmm. i painted it from a photograph yet to give you an idea that i kind of kind of different when you see something that is so invented and then this is that it isn't so much. <laughs> this is from a photograph. It's a beautiful child. Next. This is invented. Uh, and this is kind of a gift to a very special person. And she's uh, kind of like angels embracing and they're all invented. I mean, there, there's no one that I was looking at when I was painting them. Next, it's just an embrace. This is Martin Luther King uh, Academy, Art Academy in, uh, in Seaside. It's, it's by the top of the hill of, uh, of the main street. I think it's called the Broadway. And if you go see it, this is 18 feet high as well. And about 130 feet long. So when you stand on it, you're actually in the same size as the uh, on the level of the of the of the children's knees. So you can see how high that might be. And this is just about the uh, you know the uh, Martin Luther King uh, honoring Martin Luther King Jr. But I also wanted to put um, the other. Uh, part of women that that is she was also um, part of that history uh, parks miss parks and I brought in Africa and I also brought in um, the skies and we brought in uh, I don't know, the center we have a a connection kind of uh, an eclipse clips to us in where I come from, they think it's a, 
is a sign of transformation, is a sign of change. And indefinitely that was change back then. I, I, it came out, the, the story, I mean, the, the theme came out from a little girl telling me that he had a dream. <laughs> So, so that was kind of nice to hear that because she didn't say Martin Luther had a dream. He said he had a dream. She didn't say I have a dream. <laughs> and it was kind of nice. I just connected it to her as a child because they were both children and then they became these persons. So it's important for me, for me it's important that the child sees himself or herself with people that are grown up, but they were children before, in spite of their, you know, their human station as, as adults. Next. Why don't we see, see this one and then bring it to a close so that Abe and Natalia will have a chance and we'll be able to have a chance to talk to you too. Okay, sounds is that, good. Is that okay? Yes. This is just uh, fascinating. Yeah, this is Pepe. I known him since he was nine years old, and he was one of my students when I first got out of college. I was, I was trying to become a teacher back then, and so he became my teacher. I, I think children teach us more than maybe we can teach them. But a protector is there. That he's Nawal. Nawal is a protector, and it's your soul mate through life. And he has, he's from Michoacan and he has a forest, a part of his, uh, the property of his father. And he loves it over there. And I just think that he protects people, his forest, kind of like the owls do in the forest. And it's just a connection that you have with yourself, animal, self creature. And he's hanging, this painting is hanging at the, at PVAC now for the Alma Sagrada exhibit. Okay, thank you. Oh, this is just fabulous, just fabulous. What an opportunity to see the depth of where you come from and what you how you can execute that, those gorgeous visions. Oh my God, yeah. Very lovely. Yeah, it's, uh, I've had a, family. My mother died when she was five years ago. She was 93. Mm. But she started being a mother when she was 14. Mm. So she had, I was her last one. She had me in her 40s. And so that in a way already was, I mean, it's part of what I feel sometimes. You know, when I paint, I feel like I know people in, mm -hmm. a, in a small way, right? Just because of that process, I guess. I'm not sure. It's, there's, a, there's a lot of flesh and a lot of touching and a lot of holding in the gestures. They're just very, um, it feels like you you know them, you know, that you have that in you and are really able to express it. It's, it's, it is very touching. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, you know, it's, it's, I call my work autobiographical. Even Hijos del Sol, you know, our, our, our nonprofit, I call it autobiographical. It's, it's about noticing that kid, you know, that kid that I was. Mm -hmm. Every time uh, I see a child, I, I see me when I, when I was that age. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I realized that they're amazing people in spite of their human condition, in spite of wherever social, economic, or cultural stand they might be at, but even mental, you know, mental mm -hmm. health. And I think, I think everyone is very valuable and everyone has the right to create their own world and see it through their eyes. And I think that's amazing. And that's how, you know, that's how we have what we have, even technology, you know, because people dare to, to live their dreams and, mm. to, and to draw their, I don't know, their imagination. <laughs> Does anybody else have comments or questions like, like to address to Jose? 
I think there is something in the chat from Josefina. And Mary, Mary has a question. Mary Nieder has a question. Okay. Can we stop sharing Jose's screen and maybe we can see the gallery view? Uh, it is in the gallery view. Okay. I've already, I, I had already stopped sharing it. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I guess it's my mistake. I don't know how to get to it. There we are. Yes. Can you see? I see people texting me. Mary. Uh, hi, Mary. Mary, you're muted. There you go. Uh, Jose, these are amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, they just stir my heart. But, um, and I spent 30 years in pediatric hospitals. And I'm, I'm telling you, there's nothing more wonderful and soothing for a child and their parents and even the, the nursing and medical staff to see something so beautiful and comforting. Um, I mean, and anyway, I love your work. I love, I love your drawings. They're so <laughs> gorgeous. And, I mean, along with the paintings and I, you answered some of the questions. You work with a team of people because these are enormous. Some of them, they're so large. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Lady. It's uh, just, I mean, I don't think I've ever seen anything like your work before. I just can't get over it. It's just, I mean, it almost brings, it almost makes me cry. It is so moving. <laughs> Thank you. That means a uh, lot. Let's see, uh, Shirley and Ana Paula raised their hands. Hi, um, Jose, this is Shirley. Um, I just wanna say thank you so much. I feel like you take the community and you give us ourselves back in such a beautiful way. You know, I mean, I, I recognize myself there, the touching, the holding. I, I, I recognize the relationships that we have within our families in your, in your work. You remind us of our better self, Jose. Mm -hmm. Thank, you. Thank you. And of course, brilliant. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know what to say. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I just, I think for what it's worth, I think everyone is. Everyone has holds some sort of magic. But it's that moment that we give them, how we relate to them and how we care of them. My grandmother thought that children raised us. We only take care of them. We protect them. And and if you can do that, you know, with your children, just protect them and let them lead you, let them teach you what they need to, what they bring. And it's, I know I have a 23 year old and she was, of all the artwork that I've ever done, she's like the most amazing. <laughs> For true. Yeah. And if I know have, mothers, but. If you have the wisdom so to much. know that. Yeah. Know. If you have the wisdom. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, it's a. It's incredible. I still work with children. I, I, I want to leave sometimes and do my, what I call me ultima obra, <laughs> but it always brings me down. It brings me back. I don't want to say down. It brings me back to every time I see a kid that reminds me of me. <laughs> and so, so I continue. Yeah. Yeah, that's what even the soul is about. It was born from that stance. It was born from that child that was left alone to, to, yeah to seek mm -hmm. beauty among so much ugliness, you know? I, and I don't believe in ugliness. I think ugly is good too. <laughs> I, I think sometimes things don't look good, but they're still good for something. And, and, so, and so when, when you can see beauty and everything, or, or you can see possibilities rather than, you know, than, than problems, I, I yeah. think you have something. And that's what I think um, painting and murals is about, is to bring in people there, to bring them there, bringing the thought that we can do it together. We are in this together. We, we share the, you know, the, I don't know if you've seen the moon and the sun in most of the paintings that I do is because 
one time somebody told me, why are you still painting that? And I go, I don't know. It's just that when I draw, do the drawing, the sketches, there's always room for the sun and the moon. And, and one time I, I realized that, that if you go everywhere around the planet, this is what you see. Yeah, I think uh, there are two more questions. I think Anna, <laughs> Anna Paula, do you have a, you had a question? And no, then, I don't have a I don't have a question. I have a comment. I just want to uh, say uh, you have such a, a radiant and humble energy that comes because you're a brilliant person. You can see on your work. And I love how you come in a place of we. And I really appreciate that. I I I I won't have words to, to talk about that, but it's very clear even when you talk, you didn't mention here, but I, I have watched you before and you talk about the memories, even the imagery that comes from memories were built as a collective. Mm -hmm. So I just love how you talk in this, in this broad woven fabric of the cosmic existence that's just beyond. So thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Lucien, do you have some? I, I just wanted to say with everybody else, like Shirley, bringing out our better selves and a, a real gift to our community. I, um, I saw a special on television and I, I hope your, your art will be shared, you know, far and wide. It's very empowering the way you work with your, the community and with youth. Um, but anyway, I just love what you do. So thank you so much, Jose. Thank you. Thank you. Huge thank you. That was a beautiful presentation. That's beautiful. beautiful. Yes. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I, I'm wondering, Abby are, you, Abby, are you ready? Would you like to present now? Is it gonna, your internet is back on? I will be sharing, I'll be sharing her, her presentation. Oh, wonderful. Okay. So hopefully that'll work better. So I think some of you may not have been here when Abby, Abby first started. So I'm just going to introduce her again a little bit. Uh, Abby Mustafa is a Sierra Leonean American artist born in Indiana, where she received a BA in political science I love with, that. An, with an emphasis in sustainability. Yeah, Everybody turn off your... Mute oh. your mics, okay? That's right. Her vibrantly toned, detailed paintings okay. are primarily focused on large-scale portraiture that examines the complexity of expression and shows the common depths of our humanness in the beauty of cross-cultural diversity. She has exhibited widely in the Bay Area and the Midwest and was the 2020 Santa Cruz Museum of Art and History Artist in Residence. So please welcome Abby. We're very much looking forward to what you have to tell us and show us. And Abby, just say next when you want me to go to another artwork, okay? Okay, I'm, and I'm gonna stop my video just to make sure that my internet keeps working. I've been having trouble with this. <laughs> um, can you still hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, so um, I don't know what kind of order that these are gonna be in. These are all of a lot of the images that I was gonna flip through there in order in a different folder, but when I had to send them to Val, I just kind of dumped them and sent them all. So forgive me. Um, this piece I did this last year, it's called Warmth. And initially, um, a lot of the pieces that I started doing in 2020, I was doing a lot of imagining through COVID. So a lot of the pieces, when I started them, it was mostly people with their eyes closed. And everything about the art that I was making at that time was a sense of, of like everyone wishing for this other space that they had been in or imagining something else. And it was, you know, when I started this kind of series that's black and white and with color, every, all, all of the portraits had their eyes closed and then had a different scene behind them, which is not the scene that we were getting. You know, everyone was on Zoom and everyone was just not in the places that we were used to being or desiring to be in with travel and stuff like that. So this piece was born out of that, like a couple others that you'll see here as well. Uh, you can go to the next slide. This piece I did back in 2019, I believe. And this piece is called Gouffet. 
which it's braid, it's braid in Mende, which is my dad's tribal language. My dad is Mende from Sierra Leone. And this piece I, I just did out of wanting to collaborate with my cousin who is also Sierra Leone and she's a photographer. And this was from a photo that she took of two of our cousins in the village braiding each other's hair. And so it, it felt like it came full circle with my cousin being there, taking the picture, sending it to me. And then I did this drawing that I was later able to show and, and to name. So next slide. This piece I just did this year actually for the Pajaro Valley show. And this is kind of um, a wrap up to the idea that I was started with in 2020 where everyone was kind of dreaming of getting out and being in other places. And this is one of the first ones that I did for the show where um, you know, people just didn't long any longer have their eyes closed. They were finally starting to get out again. And this piece gave me a, a big sense of wonder and of hope. And this one is called Hope. And it was one of my favorites to create as far as the background and the poppies and somebody just, it's like coming out of your shell and coming out of a place that you've been incubating almost like a chrysalis. So that's where this one was kind of born of and the bubbles and the bouquet background just reminded me of hope. Next slide. This one I actually just did recently and I know we're skipping around just a little bit, but I've actually been coming out of a weird kind of place with my art where I was needing to take a break. There are some other creative projects that I didn't feel like I had the energy or the support to really do. I was doing a lot of art shows this year and as fun as that has been, it's also, it can be really draining and I, didn't really get a lot of time off and I missed an opportunity to go do this mural in Costa Rica um, and it really bummed me out and I, I got a little depressed about not getting to get out and get away and do this thing that I'd really really wanted to do and in taking a break from painting I started collaging and this was one of the first collages that I did and it really felt like um, a dream that I had of being underwater and breathing and feeling like I was doing a lot of floating and this was born out of that. And so there's a couple other collages that you'll see in here. And all of these just, I just started doing in the past two weeks. And this was the, I think the second one that I did. Um, and this one I just call float. Next slide. Uh, this was one of the first color pieces that I did this year. And again, uh, people with their eyes open, full color and really hoping and dreaming. And initially it started as a practice piece and then I just couldn't stop working on it. And it really let me explore color and it turned out to be one of my favorite pieces. And um, I think this one was called Inspire, but either way, I just loved working with color on this and I love portraiture. It's one, of, it's one thing that I, I think I'll always do in all of my art. Um, and so this was a fun project. I always like working with a lot of foliage and plants in most of my paintings, that's a theme. So next slide. Um, this one, again, this one goes back to 2020. It was one of the pieces that I started when I was working at the Santa Cruz Museum of Art and History as a resident there. And uh, again, I started this with just a portrait and then I got to imagine what they were dreaming of or parts of their lives that might've been coming in in full color, not being able to access that during the pandemic. And this one was called Abuela and a good friend of mine uh, now has this piece and it, it's a lot like her grandmother. So it's pretty special to me. Next slide. This is one of my latest pieces that I did for the show, The Art of the African Diaspora at the Santa Cruz Mall. And I actually, that show just ended this last week and this one's called Tiger Lilies. And I've been working with color and different backgrounds and especially movement just a little bit more in some of my paintings. So the Tiger Lilies and the smiles versus like, you know, coming out of 2021, 2022, or like, I guess 2020 kind of lasted for two years is what it felt like. And so coming out of that, my paintings are shifting with more with my mood and they've been a little bit more vibrant and had just, more life and movement in them. And this was one of those that I really, really loved working on. Next slide. Um, this was, this 
is this one was supposed to go with um, the Santa Cruz BLM mural. And that was a, one of the biggest projects that I did in 2020. And it was working with a group of people to create this mural on the ground in Santa Cruz that says Black Lives Matter. And that was huge for me. I didn't, when I decided to try and orchestrate it, I didn't think that it would become so big. And initially I wanted to just go out and paint it. And I thought that I could do that. And it turned out uh, that the process of getting permits and getting it approved was like a, the biggest lesson of my life, like huge learning lesson on how to work with groups and work with the city and to actually go through the process of getting things approved because then you can have more people involved and more people feel responsible for things. And they take part in ways that I just, I didn't even understand in the beginning. And that's what I wanted um, it to be, but didn't know that it could be what it's become. And it's become something that people can rally behind and participate in. And, and now we have even created another organization around it that helps with equity in Santa Cruz. So this was part of that, which hopefully that slide is in here as well. Next slide. Uh, this is some illustration work that I did. I do illustration and like large scale portraiture. And um, this was called California Heart. I have a series of anatomical hearts with images inside them. And this was the first one that I did in 2019. And it was when I finally, finally after being here since 2013, I started to feel like I was at home. And so this was, I did this one on New Year's Day, actually. So it was the first drawing I did in 2019. And it was just an ode to California and how much it's actually become part of my heart and feels like home now. Next slide. Um, this piece was also a piece that was created at the Santa Cruz Ma, and they, for 2020, they actually bought it as part of their permanent collection. And this one's called Joy in the Void. And this, again, going back to that time in 2020 when um, things just felt really unknown. And there was a part of that at one point that I felt like being in the void or the unknown offered the most potential that, that I, I or the people around me could ever really experience. And I had conversations about this with friends and family and just the idea that, you know, in the unknown, there's so much space to create rather than being in the known and always having everything figured out. And that was, um, it felt like, it felt like what everyone was going through had to be for a reason, you know, and that more could be created from it. And sometimes trying to find the joy in that void of nothingness can be really hard. But this image, I wanted it to feel like this person was really just dancing through the letting go of everything and, and being with it. So this one's called Joy in the Void, and it was one of my favorite pieces to create, and I, I still, still really cherish this piece. Next slide. This is the mural from above. This is the aerial view, and this is the first year that it was done, or maybe the second year, actually. Um, this is the second year because the letters are still being filled in on the end, and this is before it was vandalized, actually. So this is the day that we are doing it, um, an aerial view of that mural, and that's on Center Street, mm -hmm. and it's right in front of the And I, this was not me by myself at all. I um, instigated it, but the first year we had over 500 volunteers, and the second year we had less of a turnout. It was on Father's Day, but we had people come out and do roundtable discussions and equity talks. And we also had speakers, a ton of speakers come from the community and from specifically the black community, able to talk about their experiences. And it was a really good way of bringing people together to actually get people talking who wouldn't normally be talking for people to hear other people's stories that they maybe never would have connected with. And so it's become more, more than a mural, at least to me. And we're hoping to go forward with that in the coming years as well. Next slide. Uh, again, this was another piece from that same series that I did at the Ma. And this one is called Inhale. And it's it was one of the first ones. Uh, you can kind of see there's like a little bit of, again, that surrender in just being with what is at the time and breathing. Even breathing was 
a thing that scared people for a while. And this piece really captured that for me in that, you know, someone who was getting outside and ferns really represent being in the forest, especially. I live in the redwoods and we have a ton of ferns everywhere. So being able to get out and actually breathe without a mask on or having to to like be scared of, of breathing around people was what this piece was born out of. Next slide. Um, I love this piece. It was uh, the largest piece that I created at that same time. And this whole piece was again, just about finding joy in that void. And I ended up doing it, it's kind of mixed media. So this was all, it, the face is all in graphite and then the hair is in charcoal and all of the flowers were in pen. And mm -hmm. then the anatomical part down in the middle was actually uh, ink. So it was, there was just so many elements and then there's gold leafing behind it and then acrylic paint on the blue. And this one is really, really large. It's like four and a half feet by five feet. Um, and this, this was just so fun to make and I didn't want to stop working on it, which is probably why it has the most elements of every other piece that I've done. I just, I, I wanted to keep adding because I felt like this woman was really desiring it and there was just so much glory here. So um, it ended up just being the largest piece and one that, again, I love showing and talking about and I hoped that our community got a sense of, of feeling of belonging uh, with this piece and how, how everyone can belong in our community specifically, especially seeing like a black woman feel such joy in this time, especially 2020. Um, there was so much going on and I felt like there were so many people of color holding kind of the weight of the world and the weight of having to potentially be the ones that are always accepting or giving, offering forgiveness in that way or offering some sort of appeasement to change. So that's, that's where this one started and it just, it turned into this. Next. Uh, this was a little homesick, <laughs> a homesick illustration I did um, a couple years back. And these were all flowers that could be found in Indiana, little flowers and mushrooms. And it was just an illustration I ended up working on for a couple of days. And um, I never really, this one I really did for me. And I don't think I even published it or put it anywhere, but um, this is the state of Indiana. If, if, if for anyone who doesn't know that, and then I'm from there originally. And mm -hmm. so it's letters home in it. And yeah, I, I don't even know what I'll do with this, but sometimes you make art and then you feel better afterwards. And that was, this is one of those pieces where I was like, okay, I got a little bit of Indiana summer uh, with me right now. So next slide. Uh, this was just a graphic design that I did that I felt like sharing to show a little bit of other things that I work on besides large scale art. And uh, it was a graphic that I made for apparel and it, it was just a fun one that I worked on with um, different mixing and mashing up different photos and then editing from there. Next slide. This is an illustration I did for a book called Women of the African Diaspora. And they took three different artists from um, living in three different parts of the world. And we each did an illustration that opened up the chapter that was based on the part of the world that we were living in. And I was uh, chosen to do the illustration for Oakland. This is when I was living in Oakland. And so for my part, it was a woman looking out across the city and all these different flowers. I felt like Oakland just is lush and blooming in the summer. And so I wanted to include that. And um, that book I think right now is for sale at the Museum of the African Diaspora in San Francisco. And you can, I if, if I don't think there's a link on my, there might be a link on my website, but there's a couple pictures on my Instagram and uh, it's by Happy Berry. And this is the illustration I did for that. Next slide. This was just in the beginning. Um, I think when I had the slides in order, this was the first one that I started with. And this is one of the first like really large scale portraits that I did. And this was just a process shot that I wanted to share of what it looked like when I first started drawing and experimenting with, with just doing things on a larger scale. 
you know, I'd start with a photo and I would draw a grid on it and then I would draw a grid on the paper and just work from there. So it's Bob Marley. Next slide. And that's just more of that same shot, the process to show what it looks like working on these pieces. Next slide. Uh, this was a Gandhi piece that I did. It was the second or third really large piece that I did and it's four feet by four feet. I had it for a while at a friend's house and I just got it back. So it's actually at my studio at the Tannery. And this piece really, you know, it was before I was doing art professionally and I had other jobs that I was doing. And I worked on this one for so long. I took just so much like pages from books and quotes and it felt really spiritual making this piece because it was a time in my life where I was really exploring a lot of nonviolent action and communication and activism and this is what was just born out of me going home every night and having this like something to put all the things that I was learning into before they were in in a specific action and so first the drawing part was uh, Gandhi of course and then there's at least three or four layers of mixed media on here, along with uh, two-part epoxy resin, and it's all in a wood panel. And this piece, uh, it just meant so much to me for so long, it still does. But every time I look at it, I remember different aspects of what I was learning at the time and watching other people look at this piece and reading different parts and seeing what people connect to is really, really exciting. Um, and it, yeah, that's, that piece is really special to me. Next slide. Uh, next slide, this is just that Bob Marley when I was still working. Uh, this is a drawing that I did. I did like a series of uh, hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. And this was just on my desk. I was I just, just a shot of like what it looks like when I'm working on a couple things at a time. And it was a drawing with cords wrapped around the flowers around this person's mouth and it was speak no evil. And it was part of like a three part series. Next slide. Um, you can skip this one. It was a video that it, the same image should be in here without the video. Yeah, so this is that fin finished image. And it's an illustration that I did. Actually, I did it for Ome's sister, Hannah, for her birthday. <laughs> and uh, Hannah is one of my really good friends. And that year, uh, I think this was 2018 or 2019. And I remember like, I wasn't doing a ton of art for like commercially, but I was doing art for my friends. And I remember talking to Hannah one time about like honey and bees. And it just came out that I, I was like, oh, I'm gonna draw her a picture for her birthday. So I ended up drawing this for a good friend um, for her birthday. And I'm, I'm sure she still has it, but it's one of my favorites. And I, at this point, I'm like, wow, I wish I would have made a copy for myself because I really like that drawing, but yeah. These are the three other large pieces that I made for um, during my residency at the Ma. These were all at least four and a half by five feet. And each of these was created. Um, they, I tried to make them simultaneously, you know, so I found my image and I'd start working on the portrait and then slowly I'd add to it and kind of see what it was asking for. And it felt like the one in the middle was asking for the most experimentation. And I did a lot to it and I changed it a lot. And each of these really became their own cre creation. You know, the one on the right in the red, the whole, everything that he's wearing is newspaper clippings of the time that we were living in. And the idea that he was like joyful and kind of smiling through things meant a lot at that time. The one in the middle had like tons of natural elements that I was feeling uh, during this. And this woman is part of the Samburu tribe. And I've worked with this uh, photographer before. His name is John Kenny. And he gave me permission to use his photographs for original art. And once he did that, I started making these really, really large scale portraits. And I did a whole series of the Samburu back in uh, like 2018, 2019. And this was one woman and I just used her face and then the rest of it, I inputted myself. And then the woman on the left, I was trying to get a, just to vary the demographics. And when I started working on her, 
my favorite part of working on this woman were these wrinkles that she had and they're so fun to draw but it also like it gives a little bit more insight when you're drawing someone's face into to the way that they smiled or the way that they laughed or how they might have talked or spoken um and I, I like to look at people's faces now um at, even at this age like before people have wrinkles and see where they're developing and so sometimes it's fun to read the stories in people's faces based on their wrinkles and wrinkles are kind of my favorite thing to draw too so she seemed super super beautiful and I, I just wanted to draw her face and that picture didn't really it didn't feel like she asked for a lot it just was really simple and straightforward and even her gaze felt like that as well so that's where all the ideas kind of came for all of these I wanted to explore different people cross-culturally that were very different. So next slide. Um, this was just a graphic that I did at one point. I was thinking I was gonna make a sticker or put it on merchandise, but sometimes when I'm kind of over painting, but I still feel like I wanna create something, I'll get on my computer or my iPad and. I'll do digital art. And this is a digital piece that I did that I'm still deciding what to do with <laughs> exactly. But I like to look at it sometimes. It feels good to me. So it's nice to make things like that every once in a while. Next slide. Um, are there any more slides? Uh, this was the first large scale portrait that I did in California. And it was, um, I wasn't, again, I wasn't doing art like commercially, but I had some space in my living room and I had a large roll of paper and I just wanted to draw something big to see if I could. Um, and this is still to this day, it's probably the largest one that I've ever done. And this is when I started working with John Kenny, the photographer that I got these images from. And she is another Samburu woman. And this piece is called Grandmother. And just working on this piece, I feel like kind of saved my life. I was, I was going through my own grandmother journey. And so feeling like I could relate or had this presence with me all the time was really, really empowering in kind of mystical ways that I can't even really describe. It was in my living room. So I walked by it every day and I had a very tiny living room. So it took up a lot of space and I worked on it for, I don't know, at least a month off and on. And so just having it there, I almost didn't want to finish it because um, once you finish something, it tends to like walk away or decide where it wants to be. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is just more of that one as it was getting completed. And this is just some detail in that. And this piece ended up, you know, I think it's like five feet wide by, I don't know, like five feet tall or four, four feet wide by five feet tall. It's pretty big. Next slide. This is one of the pieces that's at the Alma Sagrada and show. And this one again, it was I'm coming out of the COVID closed eyes piece, but it was just getting back into nature and realizing that like, at least right now for me, when I did this piece and a lot of other people that I was talking to when I started painting it, we're going through this like series of not unfortunate events, but just like really bizarre events where we didn't really know how our lives were shifting. And this piece I started creating in a moment when I was just like, I don't know. I just like, if it were me, I just want to be outside and be with plants and not actually think about anything. And, and that's kind of what this reminded me of. And when I've talked to other people about it, it's that same idea of like, things kind of suck right now, but they just do sometimes. And you, you have to just like get outside and be with the earth, put your sunglasses on when it's too bright, lay in the sun, be outside have flowers around you and yeah this was <laughs> this was born out of a weird energy that I've been going through next slide this is some experimental art that I I think I only included it just to show a variety um this is a piece that I it's never been for sale it was just a piece that I was exploring lines and calligraphy and I've done a couple of these that I really really love and you can tell it's like outside, my towels are hanging in the background. But um, I don't even, I don't even think I named it, but it's, it's like my favorite piece and I have it in my bedroom right now. And it, 
I feel like it kind of channeled itself. I, it's got several different backgrounds before I, I went into the calligraphy part and it just happened very, very quickly and became this design. Um, and I still do some kind of channeled calligraphy sometimes, but this is experimental in that way. And that's what that comes out to be. I think there's one more piece like this in this slide, but next slide. Yeah, this is uh, the second one of that that type of calligraphy that I experiment with and play with. And again, this one, same thing. It, it was, there are several layers to it, but it happens really quickly when these two types of pieces come out. And I have a couple others like this where it's, you know, sometimes it feels like you have to do something different to get something out of you or to relate to some, and you don't know who it's gonna relate to. And both of these pieces, different people have seen them and had very different reactions. And and this piece, um, this piece I think happened in like a, a couple hours and it just all came out of me. And then I, it was almost like I didn't remember doing it, but it was, I felt, I felt emptied afterwards and it all came out onto the canvas. So a lot of times my art for me is like this expression of, of purging or shifting or letting something go. Sometimes it's for other people and sometimes it's for myself. And usually either way it ends up being something that somebody else can relate to in some way. So next slide. Um, this piece I did in 2018, I think. And this was the first piece that I ever had at the Museum of Art and History. It was a group show. And um, this was the first piece where I, I felt like, I don't know, a lot of people liked it in a certain way, but it was the first piece where I was like, I think I, I really like wanna make art um, in a like more consistent professional way or, or even just more consistently. This, it's, it's just a very large drawing and I love drawing and doing line work. And this was really fun to do. This was interestingly enough, like this was before 2020 when I had most of the pieces with people with their eyes closed. So maybe I was already leaning into that just a little bit, but um, again, this was just a lot of line work on paper and then it's on panel with a two-part epoxy resin over it. Next slide. Abby, I'm going to um, steer you to finding a way to bring it to a close soon so we sure. can. The, these are gorgeous, and I'm sure people have things to, <laughs> to com comment with you. And it's just I, so very inspiring, wonderful, hey, beautiful pieces. I actually think that we're probably pretty close to the end. If Al just wanted to slide through, I think we're probably close to keep going. Hmm. That one's also in the show currently. Mm -hmm. um, all of these, all of these are also on my website and Instagram. So um, there's a couple of murals there as well. Like this is a mural that I did for seawalls in Santa Cruz mm. here. And seawalls is all about ocean education. Mm. And this one is interesting because I did it a couple of days before the oil spill in Southern California and it just, this one's called weight of the world. Mm. And that's, it feels like the ocean symbolizes that it's carrying the weight of all of what we're creating on land. So where sure that came from, but I can close. Um, I think that's, that's most of like, if it's not all of my work, it's definitely a lot of, that's all of the variety of types of work that I do. So Wow. Just wonderful, Abby. Just wonderful. 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 It's you. just a delight to see. And your work feels so current. You know, it feels so much, it feels so much so current in terms of uh, what you capture in people's faces and emotions. And, and it also feels like it's a lot of self portraiture in there. And uh, <laughs> that you're able to, exp you're able to show that expression is, it's quite, it's quite wonderful. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. I think I, I shifted 
a lot of the portraits that I do, I, I wasn't seeing, or at least like in the art that I was looking at or was exposed to, I didn't see a lot of people that looked like me or that had at least like hair like mine or were biracial. And, and so I think when I started making art, I started encompassing that just a little bit more or drawing people that didn't always look like me too. So there's a lot, there's just a lot of variety in the type of people that I like to draw because I didn't see that growing up and it would have changed me so much to just see more people that looked like me and even just like people who weren't like all the people that I was around. So um, I just made it for myself, I guess. Well, there's a freedom in that, that you've, you've tapped into. That's quite lovely you know, you. to witness. Yeah. Any more comments or questions for Abby? I mean, they're gorgeous. They're just gorgeous. Thank you. Thanks. I, I just want to say thank you. I just think they're fabulous. Um, it, it is amazing. Thank you so much. I hope you thank just you. keep on working. <laughs> I, you know, I've not seen a lot of people of color in paintings and illustrations. And you do such a beautiful job with the skin tones and uh, the way light hits, uh, you know, the, the faces. I mean, they're really just gorgeous. Love Thank them you. all. You're so young to have accomplished so much. <laughs> oh my gosh. I feel like really behind a lot of times. So it, it feels good hearing that. I'm like, thank you. Um, real quick, how was it growing up in Indiana? I lived in Indianapolis for a, a few years and I'm from the Midwest, Nebraska. I mean, you ha did you feel like a freak? I mean, nobody, yeah. there's, so, there's so few black people. Well, in Indianapolis, there are there are people of color. I know when I, I worked at Riley Children's Hospital there and you would see more of a, a broader range of people, you know, but um, I, cause you were in, you were in Southern Indiana, right? At Bloomington? I, I, I grew up in Fort Wayne and then I lived in Bloomington for a while and I also went to IU. So yeah. I, you know, I was lucky enough. I came, my, my dad is black and my mom is white. So I came from a pretty diverse family and my dad's family, a lot of them, you know, emigrated to Indiana. So I was in Indianapolis all the time. We had cousins around. Um, I think my parents did a good job of sheltering me and kind of keeping me in a slightly more diverse community, but going to school, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't nearly as diverse as just what my parents were putting me around. Yeah. And yeah especially leaving, going to IU was great. You know, Indiana University is extremely diverse and I, I loved it there, which is why I ended up just like staying and living there after college and eventually, you know, moving. But yeah, Indiana is a different place for sure. Anna, are you, are you, do you have a comment? Um, I have a question. Thank you, Abby. Thank you for being part of the Alma Sagrada show. Um, do you have plans or uh, with the repainting, repairing the mural downtown? And can you keep us all posted so we can all re-engage and get together and do a have another opportunity to have an event like you you brought to the community, building community, you know, around important conversations? Yeah. So right now, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on with that mural. I don't know if everyone knows about it, but it was, it was damaged. It was um, vandalized back to like a month after we paint, we repainted it. And those people are being held accountable right now, ideally. So there's been a lot of court hearings that we've been going to. And I actually just, I actually just bowed out of the last two. They got pretty graphic and just uh, what the DA is presenting about these people who vandalized it is really intense. And so initially we were inviting them to do restorative justice and participate in repainting the mural with us. And so far they've, they kind of just refused and didn't want to have anything to do with that. But recently there's been kind of a shift. And I think because of the monetary value that, that they might have to, uh, mm -hmm. work through now there, there's some willingness coming out. So the hope for what we were initially planning was that we would plan an event where these people would be able to come and help us repaint and the community could have some healing around that along with discussions and arbitration. I don't know if we're gonna get that. 
So we've actually had a couple SE Equity Club meetings. Our next one is on Friday and we are going forward with repainting the mural. So it's gonna be repainted again. You know, either way, every year it gets painted in June. And because of the court, all of the court stuff that we're going through, we were just hoping that it would be done by then so that we could potentially have, you know, a really huge paradigm shift in groups that have very divergent, um, just belief systems come together to actually discuss things and to see what that would actually look like is really hard to do. So either way, it's gonna be repainted in June or July, I think of this year, we're gonna have another event again. And the reason we're waiting is because we're hoping, like keeping our fingers crossed that there could be potential for restorative justice. And I know that people want it painted immediately, but for the bigger picture of, of what could be accomplished in this, we've been waiting. So that's why it's happening so slowly and it looks like nothing's happening, but there's a lot happening behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Awesome, thank you for sharing. Yeah. I, I just wanted to say th thank you, Abby, for your um, contributions to the community and your artwork is so beautiful. I see that connection um, and with Jose's work and belief in humanity and hope. And, um, you know, I think those are the things that are going to bring us together. But thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Yes, thank you for showing up. I do it at so many events and I, I love <laughs> Starting to recognize your face. <laughs> thank you. It means a lot. Well, here's okay. a huge applaud of thanks yeah. for your beautiful presentation, your beautiful work, and keep going. Don't stop. Yes. We need you. Yeah, uh, we need you. So <laughs> Natalia, you've you've been so patiently waiting, and you are our next big item on the agenda. <laughs> we, I don't want to cut you short at all. I know you have lovely things to tell us and show us. So I'm going to, I'm going to introduce Natalia Anciso. She's a Chicana Tejana visual artist, an educator and Rio Grande Valley native of the Texas borderlands. She has earned degrees in art from University of Texas and California College of the Arts and has an MA in education from UC Berkeley. Her work has been exhibited throughout the US and internationally, and it draws upon domesticana, that's in quotes, examining the psycho-political cultural struggles of family, community, and border life through exquisite drawings in watercolor and graphite and ink on domestic textiles, such as handkerchiefs, pillowcases, and bed sheets, and a lot of her work or some of her work is displayed at the gallery right now. It's really wonderful to see in person, um, exquisite little drawings in, uh, anyway, she'll tell you more. So please welcome Natalia. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. Um, are you able to hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Um, you... I'm gonna share my screen. Let's see if I can do this correctly. Okay, are you able to see that? So yes. I'm, um, okay, so I'm just gonna show you, I guess I wanted to just show like some of the work that I did before, um, like as a undergrad and then just like show that journey. Um, let me see if I can make this bigger. So before I started with the, with the ink drawings and the watercolor, I was um, doing a lot of work in oil. Um, it was really colorful. Um, doesn't look anything like the work that I do right now. Um, so that's one of the pieces. I did these paintings um, and a lot of it had to do with uh, kind of what Abby was saying, like not seeing myself represented represented in, um, in artwork. And so I wanted um, people that look like me. Um, I just wanted to see people that look like me. And so, and I mean, that's all I knew 
growing up in Texas, um, in the part of Texas that I'm from, which is by the border. And so those were the pieces that I kind of like I did in undergrad. And then when I moved in, when I moved to California for graduate school um, at CCA, my work just, um, there was a huge shift in my work, mostly because I, like the work, these paintings weren't received really well. And so I was just very like lost in graduate school. And it was like, for me, it was like a horrible experience. Like oh. just like it, it wasn't it wasn't great uh it got better but starting like initially it was not great um I let me see if I can come out these were some of the like the great thing about grad school though is that you get like your big studio and you get to like experiment and so I started like experimenting with um with cut paper and embroidery and so I don't know if you can tell but there's like uh, I did some embroidery on this um, on the side of this. And so that kind of, these are some more cut paper and uh, drawing. Um, and then it's stitched on there. Um, so that kind of like started the shift and the, the big, like that major shift happened um, during the winter break when we went back home. So I was already to, I was like ready to drop out of graduate school. I was like, I can't do this. Like, I just, I don't fit in here and this is terrible. And like, I just, you know, I, I didn't have any like community. Um, there weren't that many people of color in the program. Mm -hmm. um, so I was ready to just like call it quits. And I, um, I remember my cousin had just come out of jail and he was showing me some artwork, um, some like prisoner artwork. And I just thought it was like really beautiful. Um, they were like done on cardboard, um, pencil and cardboard. And then I just remember feeling jealous of prisoners. <laughs> And how they were able to like make this beautiful artwork that like, you know, that, that, that came from like their heart and their soul. And here I was like in a position of privilege, like in graduate school, like going for my MFA, like, and I like, that's, that's kind of where it, it just like clicked. And so I started researching more um, like prisoner artwork and like uh, Chicano artwork. And, and then that's kind of where like, that, that shift happened. Um, I'm gonna click out of here and then I'll show you the work that that started it. Click out of here. Okay. I'm just on my website. I figured it was easier because I had problems with the other stuff. I can make it bigger. Oh, there. Um, so these were the, the pieces that kind of like, that started it all. Um, I started working on handkerchiefs and I, I went back to, um, to pen. Um, it was really like, for me, I was able to like, when I was using pen, you know, I went a lot slower and I did a lot of like meditating. Um, and the, the, as far as content, I, you know, I had to prove myself a lot in graduate school. Like I had to like prove and I had to like back up my stuff. And so what I started doing was I um, started researching the history of the border, um, the border where I was from. And and so I started, like, I was talking to, like, my grandma and hearing, like, just stories of her growing up. And she she shared um, about the Texas Rangers. And so my family is, like, fifth generation um, Tejano. So we've, like, they were there before there was a border, right? Like, and so we don't really have, like, family in Mexico. Um, 
And so we've always just like been there on the border. And so my grandma, um, from my dad's side would, would tell me stories. Like she started telling me stories about like the Texas Rangers and how like the Texas Rangers would like go to their house and kind of like raid and like, you know, for, for women and stuff like that. So they had to hide. But then she said, like, but then she was saying also how like um, Pancho Villa and his men would do the same thing. Um, and so they had to hide. So they, they weren't like, they weren't seen as like, as being from Texas or, you know, being American and they weren't seen as being Mexican. So they had to like hide from both sides. And so it was like just a really dangerous, um, you know, place to be like living on the border and not quite fitting in and not quite being accepted. Um, so that's where these drawings came from. Um, it, they're called Vinches Rinches because she like, my grandma and then another person that that knew would, would talk about the rinches and they would say like the rinches, the rinches. And then later we found that rinches were the rangers. Um, so that's why I titled them uh, rinches. And, and so let me show you some more pieces. And so it was just like reimagining. Um, so there's like so much rich history there and there was not a lot, a lot of documentation. And so I kind of like had to like reimagine these things. Um, and I tried looking for a lot of photos, but I just couldn't find any. Um, and I also, and the flowers come from like just textiles. I was really interested in textiles and like the huipil and how they would use flowers that like the women would embroider flowers that were like indigenous to um, mm -hmm. the land and you know, where they were from. And so that's where the flowers came in. And also like just flowers reminded me of being back at home, reminded me of my grandma, um, you know, that soft, like feminine uh, mixed in with like, you know, like the, the, the juxtaposition of like the soft feminine flowers, you know, on handkerchiefs with like these images of like death. Um, and so here's some more pieces. And as I was reading, there was no pictures, but there were names. So all of these, like I took names from um, history books. So it's like Jose Antonio, and it was just kind of like a homage to these people who, who are like forgotten. Mm -hmm. um, here's some Adelitas that I drew. And you can see there are these, um, I could, I, I didn't really know how to present the handkerchiefs. Um, I tried different ways. And so in this show in particular, they framed them. Um, I've showed them where they're like strung on a, I like the piece that I have right now, that's strung like on a clothesline. Let's see if I can go back to. Natalia, uh -huh. if you try, if you press that green button on the left, upper left, I wonder if it would erase what this, if it would open it up for you as a full, full screen for the, for the, Is that make it a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um, yeah. So this is one piece. This is like one of the first pieces that I did. Um, I, when I was researching the history, I learned about a lot of like the lynchings that happened. Um, when we think lynchings, we usually think like, um, you know, black people in, in the South. And so what I learned is there were so many um, Tejanos that were being lynched. And it wasn't just by Texas Rangers, but it was also by, you know, like, by the revolutionaries in Mexico, like Pancho Villa and stuff. And so I, I started doing these, um, these lynchings. Um, And I learned like a lot of women were also, like this happened to a lot of women. And so I, I just liked mixing that, you know, mixing these like dark images with like these bright, beautiful um, floral images. And I think, I think another reason I did it is because it brought people in. Um, they're so small, they're so delicate. 
and people like automatically see the color and they see the flowers and so like it and they're you know they're small so it draws people in and then they're like whoa what happens and that gets like dialogue and conversation going mm -hmm. um and I just really like I, I really like that um about the work just getting people like to talk about it you know because it it's like a sensitive subject and and I I think people are like don't know how to go about talking about things like that and so I find that the flowers are like like a, a way like a gentle way of like bringing people in um I did I don't know how to click out but how do I click out here And so that was like the Vinja Rinja series and I moved on and I kept working on handkerchiefs um, and I started using embroidery hoops. And these pieces, so these pieces are basically the same thing, but I stretched them on hoops and it's called Smile. What I started doing was like, I shifted away from like the history of the border, like the forgotten history that's like undocumented to like what was going on um, like currently mm -hmm. um, with the Texas border volunteers. And so these are basically like ex, um, it's like a militia. A lot of them are like um, ex military and they own land there. And what happens is because it's like, cause it's the border, like people cross, um, they would like basically hunt these people and then they would take pictures of them. And and, this, and a lot of these images are taken like from their actual site. So these are like actual people. Um, and that's why I titled the series Smile because there's basically like much like in the old lynching photos, like they're, they're taking photos of like actual people, you know, like they're hunting them down, they're taking the photos and then they like turn them into um, the border patrol. Oh, God. And um, and so yeah, I, I started I started taking these photos. I started collaging them, and then I started um, incorporating more incorporating them into the flowers. Um, and so some of them are like kind of kind of hidden in there. Um, in the older pieces, I kind of like just did the images right on top of the flowers, and these I kind of just wanted to like hide them in there um a lot of them are like a lot of them were children um there was like pregnant women um and it was just like i don't know it, it was really disturbing that these are like actual you know they're actual photos like you can go on their website and you can see them um i also started doing embroidery at this time so i started mixing more embroidery in there Here they are like kind of hiding in the flowers. There's some. That's uh, some of the embroidery that I did, which is really hard. Like I like respect anyone who like embroiders or sews or, cause I took forever to do those tiny little flowers. <laughs> So that's the smile series and um those are kind of, those are really hard um to do but i think like when i do work i'm always like we do a lot of research and it's it's always like for me i'm just trying to like work stuff out in my head like like why is this happening what can i do like how can i get dialogue going how can we get you know like attention shifted to like this and have these difficult conversations um that's something that I tend to do with my work. Um, I started, I also started like during this time, I wanted to work more with like installation. And so if I can move this down. Okay. 
Um, so this is this is like my MFA like thesis project. And so everything on here I drew. So um, I did like a bed sheet. I did all the pillowcases and it all talks about, um, it's all based on just like crossing the border. Um, I did this window piece, the chair. I did these drawings in here. If you like, there's um, on top of the TV, there's, um, different like little handkerchiefs folded and there's drawings like in there. Um, I model it after my grandma's room. So uh, my grandmother from my dad's side who lives on the border. So um, it's like kind of modeled after her room and just like, you know, all of the ugliness going on outside and then the safety of being like indoors, like, you know, very like pristine, very white, like my my grandma's always had like, you know, floral embroidery and um, that's kind of what I was going for with these pieces. There's also, and here's a close up of the window. There you go. Um, so this window piece is my family's in here. Um, I took photos. I did a lot of collage and I took photos like from birthday parties and, um, and then I got pictures of ice and I just kept thinking like, because we live on the border, like I just kept thinking and, you know, like, we're Mexican, Mexican American. And I just kept thinking like at any point, like had we like been like a mile away, you know, like a mile south, like that could be us. And, and so I just like, I played with that a little bit and just thinking like we could be at a party and ice like could come and just get us, even though we're from here, you know, just based on like how we look. Um, so I played around with that. And so like, my tia is here and I have my cousin, my uncle, um, the kids are getting candies. And I it just had this idea of like the, the flowers, like petals falling down, um, kind of like when the candy comes from a piñata. Um, this is another like installation that I worked on. So um, that's the tablecloth tells a story um, that focused more on like women. So I had, you know, like a, a woman border patrol and then a mother and daughter crossing, a mother who had lost her child. And so each seat tells a story. Um, I was thinking of the, oh, the, the Chicago piece with the table um, that like had different, you know, it has like different, um, it's like a different table setting and tells like different stories. And that's kind of what I was thinking when I did this. And if you look, you can't see it here, but the chairs also like I screen, I screen them and then I uh, drew on them too. Um, So I took a, a break from doing work on fabric and then I went back to just uh, pencil and graphite. And so these were some of uh, the pieces still speaking like on the border and like the violence that goes on now moving into like, I started thinking or started researching more about like the cartels. Um, and so I took these gruesome, if, if you go and you look at the news um, like from Mexico, they show everything. Um, what I did is I started taking some of those images and hiding the really like intense, like gruesome things um, and putting flowers over them. And so again, these are like actual images. Um, some of them are actual images that I like took off, took from the internet.
And so I just hid like the bodies under the flowers. Um, and a lot of these flowers, and, and I started I, also at this time, I started like really researching like the flora and fauna from the border. Um, so I used a lot of like native plants. And then just this idea of like flowers and life and death, um, rebirth, that's one of the reasons I think also like another reason I like to use um, flowers. Um, I'm also, to aside from being an artist, I also teach and I teach the little ones. And so I did this during my time as a kindergarten teacher. So I went to Berkeley, I got my um, MA in education because um, I did a lot of uh, work with youth in after school and like nonprofits. And so I wanted to be like in the classroom. And so I started working as a kindergarten teacher and then like my attention shifted from like the border to what was going on like at that present moment, like with my students. Um, and so I did this school series that talks about you know like my work as an educator um, in the bay area and then just thinking about like push out and how like there's you know like our students of colors like black and brown children and just like that prison to um school to prison pipeline and so i i did these pieces um And so this one's called Raise a Quiet Hand. Um, during this time, while I was teaching, uh, the Don't Shoot and Black Lives Matter movement like started taking off. Um, and my students, like I had, I had a lot of, a lot of um, young black students, and just just seeing how they were, how they were being treated in school, um, kind of motivated me to do these. Pieces. So this is a triptych. So the first, it's this one. I don't know if I have it all together. This is one of my students, Jeremiah. There's another student um, with the don't shoot. And then here's another one, Demarcus. I'm just thinking like of the, you know, the reality that that they face. Um, This is a piece that I did. Um, this was the actual, the first piece that I um, that I did of the series, and then I took off from there. Um, here's other students. Um, these are all pencil, and I used gold leaf with them. Here's another, this is another one of my students, um, Desire. And I went back to like the flowers, adding them in there. And so that was, um, that's the school series that I worked on. Um, I, I just feel like every time that I feel like really passionately about like something like, and I, and I can't, like, I'm not very vocal and I feel like I'm not, um, like I'm a very shy person by nature. And so everything that I can't say, like it comes out through my art. And so that's like where the school series came out of. Um, and then like that, that kind of shifted because later I became a mother um, and this, the series, the um, Matemidad series came out. Um, so this is one of the pieces that I have here. So El Trabajo de la Mujer Nunca Termina. Um, I, this is when the Women's March happened. 
I, you know, I was a new mom. I was like trying to navigate that and being a teacher and being an artist and just like, it just felt like never ending work. And like, how do I do all of this? Like, how do I do all of this and still cook and clean and like nurse? And it was just like so much. And so, um, so I started doing these pieces um, about my experiences and in the middle, like that's, I don't think a lot of people know that, but that's me and my baby, my, my oldest son. Um, and then these are other women that I saw like at the, at the march. And so this is the piece, how it looks. And I liked the, I was going to just stretch. So it's done on a big hoop. If you've seen it, um, if you've gone to the show and seen it, it's done on a big hoop and I wanted to like stretch it and then cut the fabric and, you know, but then it just felt like I, I was just like so overwhelmed and I'm like, I'm not going to cut this. I don't have the time to cut this. I'm just going to leave it like that. And like, there's no time. And that's where the title kind of came out of like the woman's work is like never done. It was just like, no, I need to like do a whole bunch of other projects and get this and nurse. So, um, and I just liked, I liked the unfinished, how it kind of looks like you know, unfinished. Um, these are some other pieces that I did. I started um, looking at female farm workers and just, you know, everything that they have to deal with, like being mothers and, you know, so these smaller pieces came from that. It's called Fuerza. And this is the piece that I have at the show. Um, I was thinking, you know, like female farm workers, how they go and notice they're kind of just like in the background. Like we know about like the farm workers and they're already like, they, I feel like they don't get enough credit. But then I was thinking like the women um, and I titled it Sol de Vivid, Land of the Free. And kind of, it kind of had like that, like I felt like I wanted it to kind of look like a flag um, from far away. I found that, that fabric and it just made me think of the, of the stripes, you know, and then the flowers and the stars. And so that's where that piece came from. It's one of my favorite pieces. Um, I really like it. it. Reminds me again of my grandmother's like hanging the clothes outside. There's a close up, and I like, and another reason I liked it is because I played with the, with the stripes and so kind of like interweaving them that was I felt like that was like really fun for me to do um, and all of these a lot of people think they're screen printed like it's all pen um, yeah. I think this is like one of my favorite ones here where you can see like she's going over the the stripes there the little baby um sometimes the women would bring their babies I mean where where else are they gonna there's you know they can't have paid they, they don't make enough to like pay someone to watch them so sometimes they would bring them and my both sides of my family my grandparents um were farm workers so this was like another homage to to my grandmother's These were other pieces. I got commissioned by um, the hospital in Martinez to do some pieces. So those two were pieces from for the hospital. Um, this was another piece. They actually, so these pieces were when I was pregnant with my son. Um, they didn't know that at the time and it was for the maternity ward. So I was, um, so while I was, going through all these crazy changes and like um very pregnant I made these pieces for their maternity ward and then yeah and then just like and now like you said like that journey and like for me being like now you know being a mom being a mom of two it, I, 
my work just like really shifted. Like it's still about, you know, the border. This is when all the, the news like started with like the family separations. Um, and these were pieces that, um, let me see if I can make it bigger. These were pieces um, that I created just like, just thinking about that and just thinking like how, like how terrible, you know, like to separate families and just like, I, I could never imagine being without my son. Um, and so these were, these were pieces titled, uh, this was like the Madonna and child um, pieces. And just thinking of these women crossing with their children, like they don't have any other choice, like they're fleeing violence. A lot of them are fleeing violence and then coming over here and then being separated from their children, and like risking everything. Um, so that's where these pieces came. Um, this is a small series. I have other pieces that I'm like, that I need to like finish. Um, to add on, but I really liked working on the wood um, and changing it up again. So I did wood and uh, gold leaf. And these are small pieces. They're maybe like, mm, maybe 12, eight to 12 inches in height. And then I, um, then with all the family separations and the, the, the news of the detention centers, um, I, I went back to like Texas and where I'm from. Um, one of the, the detention centers that was being highlighted in the news a lot was in McKellen, um, in McKellen, Texas. And I just felt like, okay, our town, like our towns are so the town where I come from is like so tiny and never gets like any good publicity, like it never gets publicity, right? Like no one knows if I tell them like I'm from the Rio Grande Valley, like no one will know. Um, and then all of a sudden I was seeing like McAllen, Texas pop up and what was it for? It was like for the biggest detention center in Texas and like, and just like highlighting all this negative stuff. So I, I started because like, I love, playing with textiles and fabric. I did this piece on an emergency blanket, um, what they were using. This was a really tough piece to do because those things are so thin and they rip easily. And so I um, I put that handkerchief like on top and I did some embroidery on it. And it was just like a homage to the families that were being separated. I also went back, like at this point, I was like, I want to go back. Like I need like color, I need, um, I just need color. And so I went back and I did these tiny little pieces. Like they're really small. Um, and I played with the line again. Um, if I can make them bigger. Here we go. And so just this idea of like, hugging, like a simple act of hugging and how these people could not do it. You know, they're doing it like, you can hug your family members. And that was like a piece dedicated to, to all the families that were being separated. And I just wanted also to like, just draw attention um, to this issue. And like, just get again, like just get dialogue going. So this piece was shown at, this piece, I got to show this piece in Chicago. And this one has traveled a lot. I've been really lucky to have it travel. And then see if I can show you the most recent piece. So this past summer, um, I had like last two, two years ago, I don't even know, the pandemic like threw me off. Um, but I had an, I had another son and that, and he was like a pandemic baby. So he was born when all of that happened. And I had a solo show coming up and in, in Makla in San Jose. And so I was supposed to do like new work. And then I had like a toddler and a newborn 
and it was nursing and it just was like again and then there was like a pandemic going and I didn't know like like it, pregnancy was all scary because all the rules changed and then it's like you can have this person here you can't have this person in the room you might be by yourself giving birth and um and it was just in, like it was an insane time but I managed to get that solo show done and while I was nursing and doing online teaching and taking care of my son like all by myself um, my parents helped me but pretty much just like single mom taking care of like two kids teaching and like making a whole new work of like series of art um able to manage that I don't know how I feel like it's a big blur but I started these pieces were like about the pandemic and about COVID and so I went back to the hug and now like before it was just the, the separate, you know, the families that were being separated. And now it's just like, everyone was separated. Like you couldn't like hug anyone. And you like, you were like, everyone was li literally separated. And so I went back um, to like the lines and just that idea of like a hug and how that like, you couldn't do that anymore. Like nobody could do that. Um, so this is one of the newer pieces that I did last year. Um, now I can't move it. Okay, it's it's opening my teaching stuff. I'm sorry. I can learn how to add with blocks. Sorry about that. Let me see if I can make it taller. Okay, there we go. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I don't think you guys need to know how to add. Um, yeah, so this, again, the idea of like hugging and being there and like embrace and how you couldn't. Um, so these were big paintings that I did. Um, and these are like super special to me because I was doing these in between teaching and nursing. And so I, I think like, I don't have the picture of the other one. It's it's like a grandfather hugging his son, uh, hugging his grandson. And I like literally like, one of the things I do remember is I was like nursing him and having like the kids like on their break and I'm like painting. I'm like, I need to get these done. I need to get these done. So these, um, these pieces are really special um, to me. I went back to installation and so I did this huge piece I didn't know what it was going to look like um and so here these are um, nurses and the the pieces in back are I put a um a call for photos um of people who had passed away um due to COVID and so I did portraits um of those people and again, just going back to like thinking of like our, the, the, um, how COVID like devastated, like not just like the world, but it really like had this like disproportionate impact um, on mar like marginalized communities of color. Um, a lot of them who were working in, in the front lines. And so like my intent with these pieces, like with all those new pieces that I created was just to sort of share like the untold stories um, of the people in these communities. So each person, like I asked the family member to share something special about them. And I just really wanted to like honor them. Um, so that's a, a close up of the close up of that. And then Here's one of the portraits. And so it's called Forget Me Not. Um, so I, I incorporated a lot of like little forget me nots on there. Um, unfortunately, like two of my family members were in there. So this is my Theo Lupe, um, my mom's uncle. Um, he passed away from COVID. And then 
I shared during like our, our practice Zoom session, the day before my opening, my uncle, my mom's brother passed away. Oh. Um, COVID. And so oh. I, um, I did a portrait of him the night before and I included him in there. And so he's like, you can see him at the, I didn't put him on the wall. I just put him right in the center at the, the very bottom of it. Um, yeah, so that's, it was insane, unfortunate, like, but you know, I'm glad that I got to honor him um, in the piece. And so, that's kind of like the journey of my art. And right now I'm like experimenting with some new stuff. Um, again, like just things that have been going on in my personal life. Um, again, having to do with like motherhood and doing it like, you know, handling all this stuff like on my own and just like navigating. Like I still feel like every time I feel like I'm in a good place and I'm like, okay, I have a rhythm going. It's like, nope. <laughs> so. <laughs> So I just like, that's really like where my art is right now. Just like trying to navigate stuff. Um, I feel like I work slower, right? Because I have two little ones and now like the youngest is mobile and he's two years old and he's just like all over the place. So I've been trying to like, think of like how to work um, faster and I'm just trying new things. That's kind of where I am with my work right now. Well, you've been very successful in many ways. And I think juggling might be one of your strengths. <laughs> but to work, your work is brilliant. There's some, some beautiful, gorgeous, heartfelt images in there, especially the little tiny black and white images in, amongst the flowers of the pain within the, you know, earth is still coming. You know, the, the, flora, the flora is still here. It's very, very touching and very beautiful. And the tininess of it, I think, is really part of the brilliance. So thank you so much for your presentation and for what another, you're doing. Another amazing artist. And yes. I, I would ask you, as a mother who was working, uh, Natalia, um, you know, in nursing, I mean, I was in a pediatric hospital as a nurse, and then I had two kids that were 18 months apart. And I, when I look back on those years, they were nightmarish. And I hope you can slow down a little because you will have, you know, you'll have time. I mean, your work is great, but give yourself a little freedom to enjoy life. I mean, you're so busy being a teacher, a mother, an artist. <laughs> you are quite amazing. Thank you. So thank you very much to the three artists who have been here tonight. Yeah. It's just oh, been wow. such a genuine, oh. I don't know, I just feel like it was big, luxurious to bathe in all of the, what you've been showing us. So thank you deeply. It was a beautiful show. So, so wonderful, wonderful. And thanks for those of you who hung out with us. We'll see you next time yeah, in a couple of months. We'll be back. Thank you, everyone. This Thank is you. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you. That was really lovely. It was Natalia. wonderful. Just Natalia, you have such a vision and a voice. And yes, you, you will be heard. Thank you so much. It really touches our hearts. Definitely. I wanted to say your your work like I wanted to start crying listening to all this like looking at the stories that were in all of the pieces that you did I could almost see it running like almost a movie with with your art just like continuously going and it just it touched my heart so much also the delicacy in mm -hmm. what you the way that you drew and with the flowers it was so extremely delicate the same way that people's lives are so incredibly delicate and whole and I just like I felt so much I was like texting my boyfriend while I was I was like you have to get on and see this she's incredible and just like it was bringing me to tears I was like this is just so incredible I loved hearing you talk about it while we got to see it which was so incredible I'm still like kind of 
uh, it was incredible. That was great. Thanks. Your work is amazing too. Like your work is beautiful. Oh, thank you. We need to like collaborate, find some way to collaborate. <laughs> Gosh, yeah. Natalia, Natalia, I just want to say to you that your work, it actually feel, it fits in the stream of women's history, where women have shown their textile work to make a voice of resistance, like the Arpieras out of the, in the Pinochet uh, administration of the 70s, also women in slavery making quilts. And there, so there's, a, there have been a lot of moments in history, even in the Trump era, when we all made those pink caps. Yeah. And, and so what you're, you're doing is you, you, you provided a piece of history recorded, and you recorded your history in fabric, you recorded the about the word that put the children in the cages. You recorded the harassment toward men of color, young men of color in schools. Mm -hmm. You know, you have recorded the history of Texas. You've made the recording of history in a, in a modem and in a medium that many women have used in the past, which are textiles. So think of yourself in that pathway. Thank you. All right. I really draw a lot of inspiration from like, you know, from those women, the G's been you know, G quilts, like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's well, well, this is your thesis for your dissertation, by the way. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, this, this is it. It's all laid out. You've got that background going on what I just what I just spoke to you about. And you've got your own pieces, and it'll flow very beautifully. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Rosie, you did a great job selecting yes. tonight. Thank you. Yeah, I, want to, I want to thank Omi. I don't know if Omi is still with us, but she actually brought these people to me. <laughs> Thanks, Omi. Oh, thank, thank you, Omi. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And they, thank they you. are just, just fabulous. It was, it was, a, it was tremendous. Yeah. yeah. And, and the word brilliance just keeps coming up for yeah. me in your work. Oh, good night, brilliant. everybody. There's okay. going. Good night. I hope Thank you hear Thanks. Oh, man. Thank you. Everyone. This is wonderful. Good night. Good night, and thank good you, night. and sleep well, and keep keep doing your work. <laughs> Buenas noches. Buenas noches, Jose. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Buenas noches.